You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. DC, DC, how you doing today, my friend? How you doing? Doing pretty well, man. Trying to uh, make amends with this boring uh, playoff run after the Pelicans ain't no longer run. That's true, but we got a lot to fill in tonight on the Sports Coma episode 196. That's right, 196 on the podcast. We'll be we'll be talking about the Saints, man, exclusively the Saints OTAs in the building. First weekend of OTAs is in the books. Of course, we got a couple of more weeks of OTAs coming down the pipe, and we're going to talk about them on the Sports Coma today. Uh, it's one of our topics, but before we get into the rundown, brought to you by the good folks at theposhlifestyle.com. That's P O S H Life Spell with a Y L Y F E Style.com for all your organic needs toothpaste, uh, organic supplements, mouthwash, stuff for the dogs, EMF protection, water filters, every and anything, dozens of hundreds of dozens of quality products. Uh, Free shipping on some, and we also, with the Sports Coma coupon code, put it in upon checkout. You get 10% off on your final purchase. All that is available at ThePoshLifestyle.com, not just a website, but a lifestyle. Now, getting back into the show on the rundown, like I said, we're going to talk about the Saints OTAs. We'll also talk about which players will surprise us. I'm going to let me and DC, of course, chime in and give us two guys That'll be that we think that'll give us a good opportunity uh, uh, that might help the team uh, uh, move ahead a little further. Also, we'll talk about the New Orleans Saints win a bid to host the Super Bowl. You know, big ups to uh, Mrs. Gail Benson for representing. That's what's up. And then, of course, NFL players, owners, uh, uh, new national anthem policy, which is kind of. Uh, rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. That is now something that we all have to, we'll talk about today as well. A very controversial topic on the players' anthem situation. Also, we're going to talk about our bubble guys. Now, of course, I gave my bubble guys on the last uh, podcast. We're going to give DC an opportunity to chime in, let him give his bubble guys. Yeah, three. give me an opportunity to bust your bubble too. <laughs> we got three uh bubble guys there dc will give you his opportunity his guys we'll talk about the improvements on the Saints side of the ball the defensive he side of the ball the people away from too. we're gonna have <laughs> we're gonna have uh we're gonna talk about the saints improved defense can this defense be a top 10 unit we'll break that down and talk oh, about some oh, solid man. guys man, top five man Oh, okay. Right. All right. That's, that's what I'm talking All about. Right. And of course, toward the end of the uh, podcast, we'll talk about some LSU talk for all our uh, Tiger people out there. We'll talk about LSU having the number one toughest football schedule in 2018. We'll break that down. And then we'll also talk about the QB battle that's that's unraveling what? for LSU Nation, who Why? we think might be the quarterback. Why does LSU have the toughest schedule? Why? Can anybody find that <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? How? Why? Dang, man! They, see, I know what it is. It's a conspiracy. But all the all the football is that what it is? The South, but they just don't want to keep people wise, man. Oh man! They still off the recruit, and they give give LSU the toughest schedule, man. That's cool. That is crazy indeed, DC. Uh, well, let's get right into it, my friend. 
And we'll start it off by talking about the Saints OTAs. Of course, a few things happened during the OTAs this past weekend. And very interesting enough dealing with it, uh, who had, who seemed to headline the show was Mr. Quarterback Taysom Hill, special teamer quarterback Taysom Hill. He was one of the top people. He looked really good out there. Coach Payton mentioned him as well during the OTAs. We also got to see a lot of the guys together in uniform, guys like Cameron Meredith catch the ball and run it. He looks pretty good, D.C., based upon what I've seen from Cameron Meredith. Uh, Looked like he's uh, gotten over that injury. And he could be a guy, obviously, that, you know, we're looking at a guy like him. Obviously, he he could be – he's going to be a steal for what the Saints got him for. But Taysom Hills look good. David Onyemata is a guy that we done heaped a lot of praise on. And we really think that – and like I've said before, this is not a secret, that I think he will take Tyler Davidson's position uh, and and, and make the Saints defensive front for a lot more – uh, forceful. Then there's also expectations about Elvin Kamara. There's Patrick Robinson. There's Davenport. There is uh, the linebackers, uh, Klein and Anzalone coming off an injury. Uh, they're healthy again. I already mentioned Cameron Meredith. And then, of course, some of the depth like Tyron Walker. Uh, he's on, uh, you not Tyron Walker, but uh, Jay Bromley and a few of the other defensive guys like uh, the guy they got from Oregon, uh, the undrafted guys coming in. DC, talk to me, man about the OTAs and who you think uh, uh, out of these OTA guys, who do you think will surprise us moving ahead? Now, when you say surprise us moving ahead, is this uh, alluding to what we were talking about earlier with our two surprise players? That's right. Or is this just based on OTAs? I'm saying, uh, it, it, you know, in the OTAs, you know, some of the guys. Make sure I get the questions right. Right. Well, you can you can answer uh, either way if you like because they both. I'm basically just linking the OTAs with the player <laughs> surprise questions. So you right on I, both I fences. I see what you're doing. Yes, sir. I see what very, you're doing. Very astutely. Right. Uh, very astute. <laughs> uh, I think the two guys that should surprise would be uh, Oyamada at some point. Maybe not so much as the OTAs, but. That's one of my surprise players um, that I'm looking for moving forward. He was very dominant. I noticed it pretty much since we got him, um, even that first year when we had Nick Farrell and he would come in. Um, he's always been good. So um, us not drafting a D-tackle, maybe that was why. So uh, that's definitely going to be one of my surprise players. For OTA, so far I got to go with, uh, and it's also going to tie into my other surprise player, which will be Cameron Meredith. Um, he's been surprising a lot of people already because he's way ahead of schedule from his injury. This man tore his ACL and MCL. Now, mind you, it was a year and some change ago, maybe a little longer than that. But according to the timetable that he had, he's way ahead of it. So that is a very positive note to see him out there already catching passes from Drew Brees. And we have a versatile weapon in him, a guy that could uh, – do things maybe like a Lance Moore uh, mixed with the height and probably also the ability of a Marcus Colston. Tie it in with the speed of, um, dang, his name's on the tip of my tongue, man, uh, Robert Meacham. So it might be all three of those dudes rolled into one in this one guy if uh, his injury allows him to be what he was. So those two players, uh, I think, we're looking at on the offensive side and the defensive side having a dynamic season. And remember the names. And remember that I told you first. There you go. Well, you know what? You know, I, like I said, we, we spoke about some of them guys, and I can agree with uh, – you know, most of the definitely some of the guys that you made mention of Cameron Meredith is a really good one. A lot of people is going to be keeping an eye on Cameron Meredith. No doubt about it, man, because a big receiver like that with speed, uh, he brings a different dimension to the Saints wide receivers you usually have uh, guys. Wiggle. Yeah, Wiggle too, right. and yeah. He's smooth. yeah, he is a smooth guy, very fluid. And uh, it's going to be exciting to see some of these guys get, get out here and try to make a case for themselves. It's just it's going to be exciting. First group of OTAs, of course. Uh, this week, uh, this past, and then of course coming up this upcoming weekend, another group of OTAs, and it's just good to see 
uh, that our Saints are back out there, and they got a whole new team of guys. Most of the new guys on definitely on it's definitely on the defensive side of the ball, looking to improve uh, that defense. And we'll cover that later on as well. Let's move it to our next topic. We're going to talk about New Orleans hosting the twenty twenty four Super Bowl. That's right, New Orleans was unanimously approved, you know, to host uh, the Super Bowl in 2024. Been a, long time, man. Been a long time. I think it was since 2013, the last time the Saints, I mean, the, the city of New Orleans hosted a I Super Bowl. I think 2012, huh? I, I guess same thing. 2012 or 2013, one of those two. But it was uh, the, it was a done by secret battle. That of course, down the line, the final hurdle process introduced last year to name the Super Bowl sites. And of course, the previous course of action required interested cities to bid for the right to host the event. With the change, the NFL now approaches a prospective bidder to put a together proposal to host, host the Super Bowl. Which in which case, Phoenix got it, and then New Orleans did get it the, the, the following year. Phoenix got it in twenty twenty three. The New Orleans got it in twenty and twenty four. Big time thing. Commissioner uh, Roger Goodell was quoted as saying, "We're thrilled to be returning to those cities, to the to the to the, the big cities of uh, Phoenix as well as New Orleans. And of course, New Orleans should have the Super Bowl every year. We just that kind of city. We made, we got all the hotel yeah. space, we got the arenas, we are party town, we got better food, we got better drink, we just overall a better situation. And so that, and then another thing." That- Deny uh, Arizona either, man. Last time they had a Super Bowl, a lot of death or whatever reason. That probably was one of the most entertaining Super Bowls we've seen since then. Um, maybe the what Seattle, New England Super Bowl. Right. Other than uh, the, the um, Cardinals and uh, wait, what was that the Cardinals? Yeah. No, that that couldn't have been a Cardinals because they uh. Never mind. We're gonna talk about that. We'll <laughs> All right. Well, let's go into the but next. Who would have been a Pittsburgh Super Bowl, right? When it went yeah. down to the wires with the Cardinals? Right. I, I, I don't think that was that. I, I got you, my friend. I I remember. But Phoenix is a very nice city. <laughs> But of course, we're going to be more cordial toward New Orleans being that our, as that's our hometown. Now, Gil Benson, a lot of credit got to be going to Gil Benson because uh, this lady never stops working. She was quoted as saying, "We had so many people work on this project, and this is important to New Orleans, and this is going to be our 11th Super Bowl, which we're so excited about." Tom Benson would have been so happy and just wanted to keep his legacy. I just wanted to keep his legacy alive. Thank New Orleans Sports Foundation and everyone that worked on this project that is so numerous to recall and name individually. So, of course, once again, Gail Benson is showing her hard work ethic and keeping the legacy of Tom Benson alive and, and, and things that he's been doing. She's been well uh, schooled in the matter and she's as class as it gets. Big up to Gail Benson and the administrators around her as the Saints do uh, the New- city of New Orleans capture another Super Bowl in 20. 20- 24. So big ups to Saints organization for making that happen. Now, we're about to go into our first commercial break. When we come back on the other side of the break, we'll finish up on our questions. We'll talk about that crucial New Orleans players, excuse me, the NFL players, coaches, owners, as they react to the policy about the national anthem. And we're going to talk about that thing on the other side of the break. We'll also get DC's bubble guys. We'll talk about the top 10 perhaps defense improvements for the Saints among LSU news as well. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Stay with us. Uh, uh, What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. I'm 
unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash view. Wow, what a huge honor it is to be named NBA 2K18 Legend Edition cover athlete. I really wouldn't be here without the guidance, love, and support of my mom and dad. Also, I'd like to thank my coaches, both college and professional. But most of all, I'd like to thank Kobe Bryant. He was an NBA 2K Legend cover athlete first. He's so awesome and handsome and has really nice natural teeth. Wait, what? I'll be looking at his teeth. This ain't over, Kobe. Payback's gonna be fun. NBA fans, NBA League Pass is your ticket to all of this season's action. Every exciting matchup. Every incredible shot. Every big moment, every game live and on demand in HD quality on every type of device, wherever you are, whenever you want. NBA League Pass has you covered. Sign up today. Follow the sports come on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. to the sports coma with big q and the guys on the pro media network welcome back to the sports coma with big q and the guys we're talking about the saints man we talking covering the saints in this podcast 196 we covering the saints in the first segment we discussed the otas this time around we're going to talk about the nfl players uh, uh reaction to the national anthem policy of course we're going to chime in what our thoughts on the situation and break it down. Now, DC, looking at this, man, a lot of uh, people upset about it. But according to the, an- the anthem policy, you know, the national anthem policy, uh, it stipulates now that teams could be fined. You know, uh, teams could actually be fined, you know, and, you know, for not but just not standing up. Uh, during it, and you know, it could be considered a fine. Well, let me read some of it uh, from the article for me and uh, ESPN that did a pretty decent job with this thing. NFL owners have unanimously approved the national anthem policy that requires players to stand if they're on the field during the performance, but gives them the option to remain in the locker room if they prefer. Okay. The policy subjects teams to a fine if a player or any other team personnel do not show respect for the anthem. That includes any attempt to sit or kneel, as dozens of players have done before the past seasons to protest racial inequality and police brutality. Those teams also will have the option to find any team personnel, including players, for the infraction. Now, this is what Roger Goodell said in one of his quotes. Quote, we want to be respectful of the national anthem we want people to stand that's all personnel and make sure they treat this moment in a respectful fashion that's something we think we owe we were also very sensitive to give players choices end quote now that's roger goodell spoken about it of course they had a few they had a few other owners that didn't particularly wanted to vote on this uh you know he had san francisco 49ers owner jed york he abstained from the vote. Uh, you know, that part of the process, he didn't want, didn't want to even much get involved in. Now, of course, they had some other guys uh, that chimed in on it. Tyrod Taylor and the rest of those guys did have some bones to pick about it. Uh, Drew Brees drew in his comments. Drew said, I've made myself very clear. I will be standing up with my hand over my heart, showing respect to the United States of America and the flag and everything it stands for. I would expect that everybody's going to be out there with their hand over their heart, showing respect to the flag and to the country. Now, Drew's made no qualms about it. He's always felt that way from day one. And Tyrod well, Taylor. Drew's grandfather was in the military, and uh, he's got a lot of family members in the military, I believe, that were in the military. Right. Listen, Tyrod Taylor. Now, Tyrod Taylor is a black quarterback in the NFL. He He's playing for the Cleveland Browns right now. This is what he said. You know, to make a decision that strong, 
you will hope that players have input on it, but obviously not. So we have to deal with it as players for good or bad, uh, for a good or a bad thing. At the end of the day, they call the shots, make the rules. So that's what we have to abide by. So I think that the main thing out of all of this is that each ball club is having open communication with players, ownership of our issues that are going on in the community and trying to change it. That's a part of Tyrod Taylor's quote. DC, you familiar with this uh, topic. What do you think about the rule uh, for the national anthem, the policy, the national anthem, new policy voted unanimously by the NFL? It's a a double-edged, what what, what do you, not a double-edged sword, but they're trying to finagle their way out of it on both sides and act as if they're neutral, but they're exposing their hand and showing where their loyalty lies. And for the NFL, it's always going to be a money play because uh, the, the military is tied into them making finance. So a lot of the players, um, of course, feel a certain way. So to try and appease the players, they're going to say you don't have to be out there for the national anthem, but when you think about it, it's kind of like contradictory to their actual point in making a state. Okay, DC is still with me. Are you still with me, there, buddy? All right, seemed like we lost DC. Um, we're going to try to get him back as he was quoting, talking about the NFL, the NFL um, anthem policy. And that just seems like something that a lot of people have that absolutely kind of <clears throat> actually kind of kind of a mixed reaction, a mixed bag. Some people think it's a good idea. Some people think it's not so good of an idea. Me, myself, personally, personally, they did give him an option. Uh, to not come on the field. And I think a lot of guys will execute that, you know, that that will continue to take their stance. But at the end of the day, my, my, my thing is, you know, I think that if, you know, if your beliefs are that strong and you don't think that you're having, uh, um, you know, the ability in the league to express your views, then I think the best thing that you could do as a player, you know, as a person, period, is that they have a lot of money. And if you don't like the, the uh, the rules or the regulations of how it goes, you know, I would think that if they don't respect their mind, maybe you should start your own league. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my whole thing. If they if you not if if at the end of the day, and you don't you know if you feel like you know this type of stuff is happening, and you know they can't seem to get it right, then that's an option that most players are gonna have to start thinking about. They're gonna have to obviously think start thinking about. Hey, you know what? Maybe we should. We have enough money. We're multimillionaires here. Why not start our own thing? Hey, you know sometimes that happens. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you have to step away if you feel like if it if if it's that big an issue, then perhaps not playing and starting your own stuff where you can be able to express how you feel and do what you want to do. Because at the end of the day, like Tyrod Taylor said, it's they're in a certain position, and then you have guys like Eric Reed. You got guys like Colin Kaepernick that are better than some of these guys that's on these teams but these guys can't seem to find a, a, a way to get a job nowadays. And of course, Kaepernick was a guy that a lot of people said that he could have had a backup job with the Seattle Seahawks, with the Seattle Seahawks recently, but they in an interview said, are you going to keep trying to protest? And Colin Kaepernick said, yes, I'm going to keep protesting. And of course they elected not to sign him because they don't want to quote uh, uh, slack or the, uh, negative reaction that he's going to get for standing up for his rights and disrespecting the flag, end quote. You know, it's not disrespecting the flag, man. You know what I'm saying? I just, I, I don't, I try to beat that in people's heads when somebody's standing up for, or for their beliefs or they feel a certain way. Not everybody's going to feel the same way about the flag. People have to understand that you can't force people uh, to, 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 to other things that they don't, they themselves don't believe in. That's not America. You know, at the end of the day, learn what the real reason why the man is doing what he's doing. And of course he took his advice from a Navy SEAL to do what he's doing. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's something we have to take in a flag, but this, this flag situation is going to continue to go on 
for a while. I, I think so. It's a hot button issue. And a lot of people seem to not understand uh, what's really going on here. So uh, outside of that, uh, let's keep it moving, man. We're going to focus on trying to get uh, DC reconnected here and see if we can get him back here because he just dropped out on us because we wanted to talk about the, the, some of his bubble guys uh, that he uh, was speaking about that he wanted to uh, talk about. And of course, if you heard the last sports coma show, you know, I had put together a list of people that I believe that wasn't going to be on the Saints roster, you know, and one of those guys were guys like uh, uh, Kakaha and we, we're trying to reach DC now people. So y'all just bear with us, but, there you go. DC. Yeah, there you go. He back. We got him back. Uh, thank y'all guys uh, for hook, hooking him back up. DC back in there. Uh, go ahead and finish your thoughts on that uh, national anthem. Uh, when, when did it drop out, man? I, I felt like I had a microphone in front of a stadium full of 60,000 people. And I was pouring my heart out. Well, the phone just dropped. Right. Well, <laughs> I mean, whatever happened. Well, you, you toward the back end, finish your commentary on the back end, and then we'll just move on to, to your bubble guys. Well, basically, uh, the point I was making is uh, I think we're living in a world now, and the NFL shows that where it's all about profit, and they're not concerned with the actual truth. Uh, nobody really cares about how the, what the players think and how the players feel, and the communities that come from they come from have been affected. So basically, suck it up, play football, show respect to your company, show respect to your country, uh, the hell with your protest, whatever it means, and just stay in the locker room if you have a problem with that. So it's, it's uh, really a small way of trying to play both sides of the fence and act like you really care on one side, but you don't. It's obviously you care about the other side. And in a way, kind of rightfully so, in a way, because it's, it's monetary based on, you know, the military and NFL are in bed together. Business-wise, uh, a lot of money, like I was saying, planes fly over, rocket fuel and cheap, servicemen are out there at every game, flags all over. So. Um, it's really nothing to feel good about. I like the fact that unlike the NBA, that the players aren't forced to go out there if they don't want to. So I guess that's the one positive you can take away from it. But it may start a whole another protest. My, it could possibly start a whole nother league if guys get astute enough to say, you know what, we're not going to play. We don't want, we're going to play in a league in which we can be able to so. do what we want to do. So this might be the thrones of what some players might come together and business people come together and put together a league that rival the NFL. This type of stuff usually is just, it's the small ignition spark that gets stuff like that going. But let's move away from that topic, DC. Let's jump right into your bubble, guys. And, of course, you know, we talked about on the previous show uh, you know, I named my bubble guys. I named a few of my guys. Uh, I got we got a I got a lot of love from that podcast. Not too many people disagree with me to your chagrin, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's, I see, disagree. <laughs> let's see what you see. What happened when I step away from the show, man? You get out of control. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. Let's let's see who DC's bubble guys is. DC, who are your bubble guys not to make the team? Don't give no oh, milk toast, to- and don't and don't give no milk toast, guys. Give us some really good ones. Oh no, you know I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna throw one that you're definitely probably already thinking about. I hate to say it because I actually like the guy, hometown dude, uh, ultimate. A lot of people might not know who he is, but okay. I gotta be real, he is a bubble guy. Okay, um, could possibly make the team. Maybe he's out of here. Uh, cornerback, uh, actually from the city. Very short cornerback. He showed some promise on special teams, but hey, you see what we just drafted. So he's definitely on the bubble. My second bubble guy, getting a little bit away from the milk toast and getting into uh, more of the laxatives, I guess. I don't know how you, know how you want to put that. What, what is your milk toast from anyway? But anyway, my second bubble guy is going to be Tommy Lee Lewis, man. Uh, Brian Scott clearly was drafted to take over the return and pump duty. Um, we've upped our ante at wide receiver. Right now, we have at least four guys that you know, um, they pretty much spots are pretty much solidified. So, um, you got Brandon Coleman, you have Ted Ginn, you got Cameron Meredith, you got Michael Thomas. That leaves basically one spot left. The same shoes can only run five receivers uh, because we have a six receiver and a running back. So, um, you're only going to have five receivers active. So, you got Trevin Durrell, Austin Carr, um, who else? Got to be missing somebody. Uh, Michael Huff. Um, you got you got all these guys. And then you got Tommy Lee Lewis there. 
his biggest attribute is special teams too. Tommy Lewis is definitely on the bubble. Um, and moving on to the most prominent one that everybody's probably going to say I'm crazy would be Josh Hill. Josh Hill is on the goddamn bubble, y'all. Dude gave us 126 yards there and touched on last year. We're paying him a million and a half dollars. Uh, and he's a decent, okay, blocker. Um, some people would say he should be our starting tight end. Some people say I might not know what the hell I'm talking about. But uh, when I've been looking at uh, Yelder and what we have in Shereen and also what we have in Ben Watson, and then to be honest, y'all, if I got to pick between Hamanui and Josh Hill, I might take Hamanui. He's a lot better blocker. He's going to keep about the same thing with Zeke. I mean, Josh Hill ain't even 126 years old and touchdown. You don't think Hamanui can do that? I know so, I can. I, mean, I know um, who man can do that. <laughs> Right, so I, I would rather keep this man than Josh Hill, and for me, I think that's what makes him a bubble guy. And by the fact that Yelder, Yelder to me is a guy that could sneak on his team, depending on how he does in training camp. When I say on the team, I mean in the active roster, maybe in the third title, and actually seeing a few plays this year. All so right. For me, Josh Hill, uh, Tommy Lee Lewis, all the play. And what the hell is wrong with you with that Craig Robinson? Man, you are too much. Craig Robinson. Well, listen, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to we gonna talk about it on the other side of the break. We're about to hit our break. But when we come back on the other side of the break, we'll get more into it. We also will cover Saints defensive improvements. Can the Saints be a top 10? DC says a top 5. Can they be a top 10, a top 5 defense in the upcoming season? We'll talk about that in LSU and other topics on the other side of the break. You listen to Sports Corner. Thank you and the guys. Stay with us. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, A Guide to Positive Child Self-Image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. Thank you for listening to the Pro Media Network, who provides hours and hours of free entertainment to you and yours. If you are benefiting positively from our content, please donate to help us grow our platform by going to www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. That's www.patreon.com slash the Pro Media Network. And support the true independent artists. Check out the Crown They Ass World Podcast, covering all the news and issues that affect you and the ones you care about, only on the PRO Media Network. Hello, New Orleans. You're listening to The Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q and the Guys. Welcome back to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. And we're talking about the Saints, man. We covered some interesting topics in this Sports Coma, episode 19 to the 6. Of course, we got to give uh, some information out to all of our listening public out there to know that the Sports Coma uh, is undergoing some changes. Of course, we're moving from one studio to another. We got a lot of equipment that we're moving back and forth. So bear with us during this change. We'll continue to... Uh, deliver uh, to you you know our podcasts our shows to the best of our ability so still be patient still 
Uh, continue to be the fantastic supporters and donators you are and continue to help build the platform as we move further and further up and up that ladder uh, toward our uh, ultimate prize. So uh, thank you very much for all that you do on this great transition. Now, DC, DC going back to you, of course, uh, we were talking about the bubble guys from the previous break. This time around, we're going to get into the Saints' defensive improvements. And this is a very uh, interesting topic, to be quite honest with you, because, I mean, the Saints made it an emphasis in the free agency to go after some defensive personnel uh, to improve the defense as well as the draft. And they were keyed in to say, you know what, we need this, we need that. Of course, you know, talking about defensively, one of the first acquisitions the Saints went after, and I'm going to name some guys, and you tell me what you think about some of these guys uh, that I'm going to tell you about and why I think that we'll be at least, at least a top 10 unit coming into And the reason why we're going to win the Super Bowl is not, you know, we know we got a top three offense, but the defense will then assume that top 10 ranking as well to help propel the team even further. And I'm going to give you these five guys, you out, you guys out there, you Saints fans out there, y'all can chime in too. Please interact with us, comment with us, and talk about, uh, a, you know, these topics as well. So everything that we talked about, feel free to comment on our comment section. You know, holler at us. Also subscribe to our Sports Coma via Twitter, Twitter, uh, uh, Sports Coma on Twitter, or on Facebook, Big Q and the guys from the Sports Coma. You can see those links in the description section of this video. Now, with that said, let's look at some of these top 10, this top five guys that I named that's coming in to help this Saints defense become a top 10 unit. Number one, we're going to talk about, and this is not particular order. Let's start from the back on up or whatever, no order. But one of the first things the Saints did in free agency was signing a safety with experience. Kurt Coleman, a guy that's very intelligent. Uh, from Carolina, he sees the field well. He joins former Carolina uh, AJ Klein here. Uh, he's he's provides the experience to help some of our young safeties who who are still young and learning. I think he is a definitely a heady guy that'll help out in the transition uh, on the back end that helps solidify our secondary. I also want to talk about Patrick Robinson, who comes home, who was drafted by this team, a former first round draft pick, went out, won a Super Bowl with Philadelphia, had some experience, refined his game. And I think this Patrick Robinson is the best Patrick Robinson of his career. We also have him as a nickelback to give that experience as a secondary. So we have the safety in uh, Kirk Coleman, the cornerback, and Patrick Robinson. Also, I want to talk about that. Uh, yes, Gotta sir. That. Right. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Also, and Kirk another, Coleman played in the Super Bowl. Got the, to mention that. Exactly. But, you know, that's what I'm saying. I, we, you can mention it uh, when you get more into it. <laughs> I ain't going to cut you off no more. <laughs> <laughs> you see how I did that there, huh? But anyway, uh, we're going to talk about, we, I said, I mentioned Coleman. DC gave the, back, the uh, extra information on him. I talked about Patrick Robinson and his ability. But I'm also going to talk about another guy that a lot of people are not talking about, and that's Demario Davis. What Demario Davis will bring as the leader of this defense in terms of inside the middle, the top man, the middle linebacker is a guy that has longevity. He's going to be there. He's going to play the entire season. He's smart. He's tough. And he's a hard veteran guy. He's a whole, almost a homeboy. You know, he's from nearby uh, Brandon, Mississippi. So he comes home and this, and he's in a prime of his career. He's an excellent addition. We didn't see Brandon, uh, I mean, excuse me, Demario Davis coming, but it was a stellar sign. And the Saints for the last three years have just been signing linebackers, destroying linebackers, veteran linebackers at the linebacker position. And I think this year, right, and something going to stick. Demario Davis is definitely going to stick. So, and then of course, uh, you know, I'm just going to throw one more guy out there. I'm going to talk about the Saints in the draft going after this guy, giving up a first round draft pick this year and next year to move up to select Mr. Marcus Davenport out of uh, 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 San Antonio of Texas. Now, what's interesting about this is the fact that this guy is a pure pass rusher. He will provide the pass rushing opposite off the edge of Cam, whether that's in, coming in a reserve capacity behind Alex Okafor or you can flip-flop that, whatever the case may be. With his addition, along, along with Daniel Onyemata's maturity, I believe Onyemata is going to take the position from Tyler Davidson this year, and he will provide a good bull 
pass rusher stuffer next to Sheldon Rankins and solidify that Saints defensive front four along with Davenport and Cam. I think the Saints defense will really take that step inside the top 10. DC, that was a mouthful. Now you comment on uh, that and even (laughs) add a player if you want to, if you can, brother. Well, I'm going to start off with my added players. There's one guy you forgot about. He's not necessarily an addition, but he kind of is. Alex Anzalone. Set out all last year. Uh, until we got the Murray Davis, in my opinion, was probably the best athletically uh, linebacker we had at the position. Um, he's going to make a very huge impact. He's just like A.J. Klein, knows where to go with the moves for the ball. Always was around the ball. He made a lot of plays in the uh, four weeks that he played. He looked horrible the first two weeks of the season, but he looked amazing. So uh, Alex Anzalone is another name you got to throw in there. Um, Kirk Coleman, to me, was big. Now with Kirk Coleman out there, that play that you've seen with, uh, with Mr. Williams, I don't think that would have happened with a Kirk Coleman out there, a veteran safety with that type of experience. Um, a safety is pretty much like the quarterback or the secondary on the back end. So it's very, very big that we got somebody with that type of experience that has the brain to be able to put everything together and also has the chemistry. Um, he goes paired up with A.J. Klein, who he played with at Carolina, and he's an Ohio State Buckeye. So he knows uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Michael Thomas, I'm sure he's met these guys before, so it's almost like coming home for him. Then you got Patrick Robinson, who is coming home. Uh, very good cornerback. He was actually pretty good when he was here. He just was not a number one. We tried to make him a number one, and he wasn't very well. He wasn't very good. And um, we had uh, some other cornerbacks and kind of let him go. To me, I was kind of sad to see him go. I thought he wasn't as bad as the rap that he got here, and he went to Philly, and he showed you that. So he's the number three overall slot cornerback in the entire league last year. And I think add that to what we had, because that was one of the weak areas we had. We're showing up a hole, and we're getting some more experience in that secondary, because our secondary is extremely young, which is why I wasn't big on us drafting another cornerback early in the draft in the first round. When uh, me and BQ talked about that through a lot of our draft conversations. Um, and also, last but not least, uh, Mr. Davenport. Oh, no, I still got uh, the Mario Davis. He's going to be last. But Mr. Davenport, man, uh, this guy is amazing. Everything I've been hearing about him, he has a superstar written all over him. He's got the, the size, he's got the body. He says all the right things. So it's just time for him to go out on the field and produce. And I mean, if he's a fraction with a first-round talent picked in the top 15, should be. Uh, that's going to be pretty amazing for us because we got Cameron Jordan on the other side, and we just need you to be one-on-one. You know, I mean, you got Oyamata, like you were saying, going to step up. You got uh, Sheldon Rankin. On LSU. They're still on a high. You got there. Alex uh, Oak in the back, the back end of that, rotating it out, uh, maybe starting in the beginning of the season. Um, I think Marcus Davenport is going to be an excellent addition to this team, and a lot of people are going to be looking back at the, uh, the extra pick we gave up, like, so what? Then you got Demario Davis, man, um, probably the best acquisition of all of them. Uh, he was the Jets defense last year. 140-something tackles, some crazy numbers like that. Uh, he, he is good in pass coverage. I heard an iPhone on him. He's not supposed to be a good cover linebacker, but he's good in pass coverage. Very versatile. You know, this follows the team for all of our linebackers now. Um, they can all play multiple positions. So uh, if he needs to play the will of a spot or he plays the sound spot, he can do that. Um, he, him and Azalone can be out there. AJ Klein can be out there. Him and AJ Klein. So we got a lot of versatility. We got the perfect balance between being young and experienced. And I think all those key factors tied to the Saints possibly being the top five defensive units if everything goes according to plan and we have an excellent run game to keep them fresh, of course. All right, well said, DC. Uh, you know, I like to throw in the Alex Anzalone because people forget about Alex Anzalone. He had that, that issue with his hey. shoulder. And he's definitely going to be a, a compatible part. Then, of course, you know, the depth purposes of guys like Craig Robinson, uh, A.J. Klein, and then you have uh, yeah, Manti Teo. Right, so you, we it's very interesting. Alex Okafor is another and, guy. Uh, if uh, uh, 
Key Taha, the guy you said is going to get cut if they find a way to keep him as well as a lot of these other guys who don't know him. And he is the player that he's been that doesn't get hurt. I mean, who will we look like this? Right. I mean, we. we him as a rotational pass rush. We we said it quite before, man. We talked about this before about how stacked the Saints are, especially at the pass rushing position. We will talk about the Saints actually throwing pieces at a position, like they threw at the linebacker position. They threw a bunch of pieces at the pass rush defensive end position as well, and they've turned in a lot of very solid players that we didn't even mention. You talk about Trey Hendrickson. You talk about guys like El Kadeem Muhammad. You talk about guys like George Johnson who came on off the street and got a bunch of sacks. So I mean, when it's all said and said and done, the Saints look good. But anyway. Let's get ready. We're about to go into our final break of the show. Um, we're gonna we're gonna close our Saints talk right there, heading into the break. And uh, and I'm excited about the Saints moving forward. Remember the OTAs coming up this weekend and the following weekend. We'll be covering that as well on the Sports Coma. Also, stay with us. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna cover some news from LSU. All our LSU fans out there, we got some news about the Tigers. Stay with us. You listening to Sports Coma? Big Q and the guy. Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guys intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, An estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. Follow the sports coma on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Breaking down the Saints. And now in the final segment of the show, we'll cover the LSU Tigers. The, the uh, Tigers, of course, had an interesting article that DC uh, was talking about uh, ranking the, the Tigers schedule as the toughest in the SEC. <laughs> if that don't strike us as odd, man. LSU. How the hell is that not Alabama, man? Alabama's been running through everybody. For the last 10 years, feel like, and how we get the toughest schedule. <laughs> Truly interesting. Man, man, it's just complete hypocrisy, man. I wonder if they, uh, you think Saban paid them people off and made the schedule with you? Uh, uh, hey, he could, they, they, they basically are juggling. He does, he does that. 
But uh, you know, but a lot of people don't know about the LSU fighting Tigers. The fight that the Tigers schedule for the upcoming season, even though it says the toughest in the SEC. We're looking at the Tigers schedule. I got it in front of me here. They start off September the 2nd against Miami of Florida at 7.30 p.m. That's going to be a big game because Florida, uh, Miami, the Hurricanes, were pretty damn good last year. Uh, yeah. That's a tough one. September 8th, they opened up against Southeastern Louisiana, uh, which is a gimme game. September the 15th, they're at Auburn. That's going to be interesting. September the 22nd, they, come, they stay home for Louisiana Tech. Then the 29th of September, they have Ole Miss. October the 6th, they go they go to the Swamp to face off against Florida. October the 13th and October the 20th and, and November the 3rd, they face Georgia, Mississippi State, and Alabama in Death Valley. So that's November the 3rd. Wow. <laughs> then November the, November the 10th, they travel oh, to Arkansas. Man. They travel up to the, to the uh, Razorbacks of Arkansas. They match them, and then they come back home against Rice on November the 17th, and they close out the regular season November the 24th at Texas A&M. So there you go. That's the Tigers' tough schedule going ahead, my friend. D.C., what you think about uh, the, them having the toughest schedule in the SEC? I think it's – Oh! Bleep, 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 bleep. Because, uh, I mean, it's crazy, man. They did it to LSU last year. They had a pretty hard schedule. I mean, they had, like, a five-game run that was, like, ridiculous. You know, like, they played Alabama, like, I think, after playing, uh, who was it, man? It was Ole Miss. They had to play Ole Miss, Auburn, and Alabama all, like, back-to-back or something like that. They, I don't know why they keep doing this to LSU, man. It's almost like it's not a good time. But uh, we're going to see how it all We got a good team. And we're always able to rise above. Uh, basically, uh, we ain't gonna go below 500. So I don't know how excited I am after hearing that schedule about title chances. But we, this is a rebuilding year for us anyway. We don't even know who the front runners are for the key pieces of the new regime. So here we go. Here we go. Tiger football is gonna be real interesting this year. You ain't lying. I'm just gonna be honest with you. You tell an absolute pure D truth there because. A lot of key positions for the Tigers up for grabs, especially at the coveted running back position where we've just been spoiled for the last, I don't know how many years. We had some. got to see who got that, that lucky number seven, man. We had some terrific running backs over the last, I don't know how many years. You're talking about guys like Leonard Fournette, Darius Geis, Terrence yeah. McGee, Spencer Ware. I mean, the list goes on and on. Of some Alfred of the, Blue. Alfred Blue was there. You know, he had some really terrific, running backs that told it the the torch for the for the tigers and of course you know the wide receiver position is a, another like position an into the league to be a running back for LSU. right if you can dominate <laughs> LSU, we got a draft we got we got we got a uh a first round spot waiting for you uh a la leonard finette a la uh darius guys but looking at yeah it should have been darius guys he went the second round he should have went the first round it was messed up by the academy right right but at the end of the day LSU have a lot to look at. We look. We talking about wide receiver. You're talking about offensive line, uh, defensive. They might be a little bit better uh, there. Secondary wise, of course, Greedy is there. Of course, you got Dell Pitt that's he coming back off injuries. Right. So we go, it's going to be interesting to see. But the number one caveat to the to the the Tiger quandary, you know, the question, and of course, JT Barrett was a guy who chimed in on this topic. And uh, he basically threw his thumbs, his, his his word in there, and said that he think it's going to be Joe Barrow, who uh, he played with, he spent three seasons with, three years with at Ohio State. Barrow, of course, transferred from Ohio State. Uh, he thinks his former teammate will be the Tigers' next starting quarterback. Now, Barrow, very interesting uh, quarterback. Of course, you still have competition from uh, guys uh, like Justin McMillan. You got Miles Brennan. A lot of people like Miles Brennan. He had some opportunity to ke- get a couple of snaps last year. And, of course, uh, Lo- Lowell Narcisse, a- another terrific guy. They're all battling for the spot. But when you talk about Burrow, who redshirted back in 2015, then he was basically uh, JT Barrett's backup, uh, you know, for much of that. And he was even a third stringer in 2017. But Burrow said right. that he looked impressive. And they're thinking that that he could be a guy uh, who can come in and obviously compete for that QB position. 
Now, he made some appearances. Let's say he made uh, appearances in five games over the past two years with the Buckeyes because basically right. it was JT Barrett's team. He was 22 of 28 for 226 yards with two touchdowns. He ran 12 times, 58 yards in the score. In 2017, with uh, Dwayne Haskins ahead of him, he slid back to the third spot, and he was 7-11 for 61 yards. But Barrow completed almost like 74% of his passes when he entered as a backup the past uh, couple of years. Now, now, J.T. Barrett said he knew exactly where to throw the ball, and he completed the ball. Now, of course, like I said, LSU has a, a lot of young guys. I just named a lot of those young guys, D.C. Uh, they, 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 they talk about Barrow's intelligence, intelligence and effect. This, he, he transferred to LSU. Now you have all those guys – uh, uh, young quarterbacks, pretty much. You have an experienced guy coming in here. Should it, is it is it Barrow's uh, position to lose? Is, is are we looking at the starting quarterback and uh, and Joe Barrow here? I mean, you have to, man. When you got a guy you, that stands for that you wanted, like we went and wanted him. Let's just be clear on that. Uh, so when you see that, I mean, the writing's on the wall. They letting you know they're not sold with Miles Brennan in my opinion, and with less time and less opportunities because we gave Miles uh, Brennan some opportunities here at uh, LSU, and we did it in games where we were losing, you know, to see what he could do. Uh, pretty much when you racking up, give me, you know, trash time. And he didn't get anything but one touchdown, man, maybe out of six appearances. Obviously, they don't like what they've been seeing in spring training. In, uh, in the spring game, so Barrow, Barrow to me, this is position to lose. Um, he's completed seventy four percent of his passes. He didn't produce with at least three touchdowns in the five games that he appeared in. Uh, Brennan appeared in six, and I'm more than sure he probably got a little more time than Burrow. And his stats are, you know, not even close to that, and that's not even a lot of production. So um, I think Brennan and then. Pretty much wore his time out for the meantime, and he's probably going to wind up behind a guy like Burrow and maybe have another shot um, once Burrow is out of here because he already has three years of experience. So I think he's a senior, or did he redshirt one year? Um, I'm not sure, but either way, either way, I'm going to back off on uh, Miles Brennan is up at Younger School. I think he need to do a little bit more. i tell you what, man, I think that that's uh... – that's well said because he's not transferring to sit. I think he's in, he's more experienced than any of the quarterbacks we have. He played at a big time program. He uh, his uh, affinity familiarity and with a pro style system. Right, <laughs> right. So and his his uh, familiarity with a pro style system. Uh, they like to air it out out there, and I think that's what what uh, Coach Ogeron is attempting to do. This year around, despite losing Matt Canada, that was nasty. They did retain Dave Aranda uh, coming to this to this next year, and they did replace back the offensive coordinator, was pretty much the guy that was the tight ends coach, and they moved him right back to the role he was before Matt Canada got here. I don't know how that's going to work and how you're going to sell it, but the people uh, – not too good. Right, so that's what I'm saying. You The, what, what, the create, creativity aspect of the offense kind of went away when he was – when the – when – you know, the, what Canada was doing last year wasn't terrifically impressive with everything, the shifts and all that kind of stuff, you know. But in the end, that was just one season. We you know, he, of course, we knew he would have built, built I, more I would have liked it. to see how he looked after a recruiting player. Yes, absolutely. I, I agree with you. You know, but now you're looking at LSU. LSU has a lot, man, a lot of newcomers, a lot of young guys in positions where we had established guys before and the toughest schedule in the SEC, it's not looking too good for LSU uh, going into that, uh, coming, you know, uh, moving ahead with all that youth. We just hope that those guys can pick up the system and that everything will click and we'll be able to, the offense could be able to move the ball through the air to give the running, the, the, the passing game an opportunity to move the game and we have more of a balanced uh, attack with that defense because that defense has a lot of, you know, even though they're a little bit more established in the transition Tigers team. We're not really, I don't know what to say we're going to expect out of this team. I think nine wins would be good to say, but I, this is like one of those teams where, you know, they're building upon the team behind it perhaps. I'm not certain, but 
I, I don't know if this is a contending LSU Tiger team. I really don't know. You don't have that staple name that you like to hang the hat on uh, to move the team ahead. But anyway, that'll do it today for the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guy. So if you enjoy the shows and you want to help out, go to our Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network and donate and, comp- and continue to share uh, the show with your fans and friends among other people and join our social media network. For me and DC, thank y'all for joining us tonight. Sports Coma, episode 196. Peace. Hi. You are listening to the PRO Media Network. The next level in entertainment. You're listening to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. At the Posh Lifestyle, I go there for all my health needs. They offer great deals on organics, water filters, healing magnetics, healing crystals, clothing, books, DVDs, vitamins, and a lot more. They even have free shipping when you spend over $100 on most products. With secure online ordering, fast service, and great products, I saved some money, and I'm improving my health doing it. It's a win-win, so do what I did. Go to shop.theposhlifestyle.com. That's shop.theposhlifestyle.com. That's shop.theposhlifestyle.com. So upgrade your lifestyle with the Posh Lifestyle and love what you do. (laughs) 